Pimp, Pimp, Tally Ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like these films. Um, and you, you can hit the little bell. Always hit the little bell because that means that you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Now, my friend Michael said to me, Julian, why don't you make a video about cheese? And I said, well, basically, because I don't know anything about cheese. And he went, no, London has an amazing cheese scene. So he said, come down to my shop down in Borough Market and I'll tell you all about it. So here we are. Let's go. London cheese. I'm very fond of vegetables, I'm very fond of meat. In fact, I'm fond of anything that's really good to eat. It's a very little I'm known fact that uh, Michael, my friend, uh, used to be in a band called Cream in the 1970s. <laughs> Don't mention Eric Clapton, OK? <laughs> Michael, excellent. Hey, How are you doing? Good, you? Nice to see you? you. This is Blackwood's Cheese Company. Uh, Blackwood's Cheese, they're based in Kent. All very, very special British cheeses. There's no, you know, gimmicky supermarket cheeses, it's all serious stuff. We're talking serious cheese. Just recently there was the World Cheese Awards okay. in Wales. They every year, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. It's, like, it's like the World Cup okay. of cheese, but they hold them every year, different yeah. countries. And this one, Edmund Chew, it won gold medal in class. Try some goat's cheese. Oh my God, here we go. This is from Scotland, Elric Log. Uh, Epoise is a lot stronger from the Lake District, Martin Gott, Go and on, it will then. give you half an hour's worth of pleasure afterwards. Really? Half an hour of pleasure from your cheese. One guy I used to work with, he would describe this as a five mile cheese because you've eaten it, you walk down the road, five miles later you're still getting different flavours, different waves of explosions yes. in there. I'm fond of fish and fruit and all the rest. But here's the thing I really like the I forgot how many cheese shops there are in Borough Market. This is ridiculous. And then what's this one cheese you got here? That one, it's a long, so it's a cheese washed with champagne. So it's really creamy, really tasty. So Fine. what is better? French cheese or British cheese? French, of course. Is it? I mean, <laughs> they've got like nice cheddar and stuff like that, but uh, French product, we've got more like, we've got a wide range of cheeses. That's not what he was saying. He was saying British cheese was better. He... <laughs> yeah. We won't be agree. <laughs> Which is your favorite cheese in here? We've got some nice blue as well. I love Rockford. Thanks. Cherry jam, chestnut cream, really nice as well with cheese. And a glass of English wine. We can try. <laughs> gorgonzola, gorgonzola, three cheers for the green, white and blue. I, no, I don't like blue cheese, but I have a feeling you're about to make me something. eat some. We're going to get, we, this is going to make your hair curl. Blue brain, because oh, it looks like a blue brain. Why. But the blue is only on the surface. <laughs> What's all that on there, look? Yeah, it's old. Really? Yeah. And you wouldn't, well, you'd scrape that bit off. You wouldn't no, eat that bit. No, it's all edible. Really? Yeah. yeah. Would you like to try? Well, now you've made it sound so appetising. Try the middle bit without the blue on, and then you're eating blue cheese, but the blue is only on the outside. Okay, okay. It's my mission in life to convert people mm -hmm. who think they don't like blue cheese into understanding what blue cheese is. It's not entirely disgusting, that. There we are. We, we... It's a dried cow's milk cheese, um, and it's completely hard and dry. Right. You can hold out your hand if you'd like to try. At the bottom. Uh, oh, oh, you're shaving it onto. Yeah. Oh, so they're shaving the cheese. It's a, it's a topping cheese. Um, for like pasta, risotto, steak, salad, scrambled eggs. Um, so it's more like a seasoning cheese that you'd use instead of Parmesan. Rather, yeah, rather than on a cheese that is good. It's very labour saving when a dinner party comes. You leave it on the table and it eats up all the crumbs. Gorgonzola. I said to Michael, you know, I'll make this cheese video. If, as long as we can film someone making some cheese, and you go, no problem, there's a guy down in uh, Bermondsey uh, called Capacasin. And so he got me up at like six in the morning. I've been up all, all night working on my book, by the way, which I've got a book coming out soon. So check the text, you know, might be able to pre-order that soon. So let's go see cheese being made. The new Jules guy to tire. Now available in his merch shop. Where's all this milk come from? And why'd you put it on that one first? I'm weighing them, yeah, yeah. So I can tell the farmer how much I took from Commonwork Organic in Kent, near Sevenoaks. It's a little bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. When you come in, you've got, you know, when, you, when, when, when the, the bowls of porridge, you've got daddy, daddy bear, <laughs> baby bear, and like mummy bear, and all the different size of shoes, and it's, so they're all over the place. <laughs> and then you need another different set of shoes to get into the inner sanctum. Yes! Sanctum through that window there. Get a couple of these. One for you as well. Yes, thank you very okay. much. You look like, I don't know, Picasso or something. First day at work, it's a cheesemaker. Gorgonzola, 
gorgonzola. It's good for me and also good for you. Yeah, that means we're ready to make cheese within 20 minutes of it being in the vat. If you touch the outside of the vat, you can feel the warmth. Hey, wow, yeah, yeah, it is. It feels like putting your hand on the back of a cow or a horse or something. You know, when you feel it's that, it's that kind of temperature. No, that's the rush of getting here the milk as soon as possible. Yes. So, so it's at the, yeah, we say at the cow's temperature. Yeah. Now in the ballroom, people want a new dance every year. And what is it that jumps about and gives them the idea? Gorgonzola. Once the milk is in the vat, we will reach the rennet temperature. And then we apply the rennet and we wait and we cut it. It will be about 20, 25 minutes. Wow, wow. It's quick. It's quick, yeah. What are you making here? Oh, this is the ricotta. Oh, ricotta, yeah. nice. We made the big cheese and the ricotta on Tuesday. Oh, okay. And the big cheese, what does that get used for? It's the uh, press, it's, it's the kind of Gruyere style cheese. You could help me lift this in. Do you want a, do you want a, do you want a, do you want a, a little job? You come and see it Do I want a job? All right, I suppose so. Take it all out. man, isn't it? What you? Man. It's not my fault. I okay, you go up, and we put it on there. Perfect. Okay. Okay, now we're going to tip. Oh, hang on. All right. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. I haven't okay. screwed this up. Keep tipping. Okay. Okay, relax. Just okay. tip. There we go. That's fine. Beautiful job. Yeah. I think you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's called delactosing. So it's going to dilute the lactose, which reduces the acidification. So lactose turns into lactic acid. So the rennet is, is cutting the kappa casein, which is the protein, kappa protein. It's from one moment to the next, it goes into a slight jelly. Well, it's more seeing what it leaves on your finger. Oh, I see, right. So it's an I indication of how quickly things are progressing. Right. So you got it, eh? So the, it's, flo it's flocculated now. Flocculated? And, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's that's a, a, there's a word for Scrabble. <laughs> and then now we're going, we've entered the hardening phase. Flocculate off, Simon. I'm very fond of gambling and I love to see a race. A week ago today, the grossest handicap took place. Each owner ran a cheese, and now I don't boast. They shouted as my cheese went past the post. Gorgonzola, Gorgonzola, three cheers for yeah. the... We're going to see one you prepared earlier. Oh, wait a minute, it's for hobbits, this one. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I fit perfectly. You just walked straight. So generally, the small ones stay for three months. And those ones stay 12 to 18 months, the big one. It's like uh, Gruyere, so you can make fondue with it, you can grate it like Parmesan, oh. or you can just eat it on a cheese board. It's not like I hate cheese. I like cheese, I just never really stopped to think about it, you know? It's just cheese to me. I just I'm saying it. Now I'm actually seeing how it's all made. It's quite, it's quite remarkable. There's so many different types. How did you start making cheese? I mean, is it your business, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked in Switzerland um, in agriculture, trained and went to college. So I got involved with food production. Then I worked at Nielsa Dairy for 14 years. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I went back to Switzerland and worked in Etiva. And they, that, that's the equipment I've got, it's from Etiva. And this goes straight to your special sandwich making place in Borough Market. Yeah, we, we make sandwiches at Borough Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We also sell the cheese, yogurt and ricotta. We also make it so we can melt it, like a raclette. Well, it means to scrape in French, so raclette. Fromage à raclée, so the scraping cheese. What does your wife say, or does she ask you to dress up like this sometimes? Uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my, my wife left me then. Uh, oh. I solved the problem. Oh, no, not because of that, I hope. <laughs> Maybe that was it. It's a good look. And now with the lid, we shot. Thank you, Grazie. <laughs> with cheddar second, stilt and third, the rest all strung along. Who was it came home miles in front and still was going strong? Gorgonzola, Gorgonzola, three cheers for the green, white and blue. Ciao, come stai? Hey, how's it going? It's busy today. You are? Are you always busy? We are always busy, you're right. You're right. <laughs> how are you? You like a toast today? There's a massive queue for the toast. No, if you get a raclette, you can get a toast. I'll just get the raclette, it's fine. Yeah, One raclette, yes. please. This is the cheese we saw being made down in, you know, propagation. I helped to make the cheese. Yeah, Thanks very much. Thank you. There we go. 
Right. Okay, there's the obligatory stuffing it in your mouth shot, of course, which everyone has to have, like on Blue Peter. Mmm. <laughs> that is nice, actually. which is entirely sure I know what cheese is. Basically, cheese is milk that's gone bad, uh, effectively. Um, they reckon that the cheese was very first discovered, not invented, going back you know, pre-Roman times in the Greek area. They, they, they would use cow's stomachs to transport liquid in. They would tie them up at either end. There's an enzyme in, on the lining of the cow's stomach which separates the milk into curds and whey. But when the cow's stomach filled with milk was being shaken around on the back of a donkey somewhere, of course it shook it all up, turned it into cottage cheese and whey, and that's how cheese was started. Well, the cheese explorer. The cheese explorer on Instagram. Look, there she is. How about that? I... I'm a cheese consultant. I work in cheese, helping, it, helping open cheese businesses. So if I was living in south of Wales, I'm yeah. going to be into different cheeses yeah. from if I was a Geordie or something, you'd, you'd probably go to the Geordies and go, oh no, actually I think you prefer this kind of cheese or your customers are going to prefer this kind of cheese. Yeah. I know who, who likes what. Red cow parmesan. I had this on Friday night with my pasta. So this is a very high quality. Oh, I've got the uh, good stuff 24 here. months for this yeah. one. This is the red cow you're trying now. Of course you can put it in pasta, but you can eat it as it is because, you know, it's a, it's a real beautiful cheese. And uh, the Italian very often would actually just get little chunks of this and put balsamic vinegar uh -huh. or a bit of truffle honey on it course, and yeah, just yeah. wash it down with a glass of Prosecco and so life is worth living. Why is it all right to have really old cheese? We've aged this for, you know, seven years, uh, and as soon as I open it up and I stick it in my fridge, I mean, I have to shave the cheese. And in 40 hours, when she says, oh, chef's just shaved the cheese this morning. But it's actually not a joke. It's what we do every day. When, we, when we're opening cheeses up, that we've been, they've been cut open for a few days. The first thing we do, we open it up, we just scrape off the mold off the top. Right. It's growing, it's basically it's trying to grow new skin. Does more beer count as a moldy cheese? No, that's a line of ash through the middle. I can't eat any more cheese. Just one more bit. Try that blue. It's amazing. <laughs> we made that for the London Olympic Games in 2012, and it was also served at William and Kate's wedding. Mm -hmm. You can eat it like that straight from the fridge, or you can cut the top bit off, put the top bit on your cheese board, and then bake it like a camembert. Do you want to try that one? No, I can't keep eating cheese. I was just clearing my throat, actually. And blessed are the cheese makers, for they shall inhibit their girl. Three cheers for the green, white and blue. Gorgonzola, Gorgonzola. Michael's brought me back up to Neil's Yard. I've been to Neil's Yard Dairy in one of my other videos, but um, so why is it, what's, what's special about the Neil's I Yard? It was really back in, I think it was in the early 80s or late 70s, that Neil's Yard were instrumental in really promoting traditional British cheeses again. In 1939, the British government stopped all cheese production because of the Second World War. And it was back in the 70s they started to say, no, we have a great tradition of British cheese in this country. And Neil's Yard were really instrumental in helping to promote it again. They've been there since 1972-ish. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> <laughs> Round about there. Oh, wow, so a, lot, a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cheese is made all over the country. And then our like, cheese, our, basically our directors and managers go out, they trial the different batches. Yeah. We mature it in our arches by um, Farah. There's another place right there next is, yeah, to here. It's like literally here, and this is a little bit different. This is a different way of serving cheese. It's really interesting. And, and, cheese yeah. sushi. Cheese sushi, <laughs> but it's just such an interesting way. And they only sell a small selection of very high quality British cheese. Good luck to them. They're promoting British cheese to tourists in a real funky, great way. With silk and sauce, five cheese macaroni, oh, blue yeah. cheese raclette. Okay. We have multiple different fondues on a Thursday, so we run a fondue Thursday evening. We have guest collaborators. Sid Glass and both the Liberals and Conservatives are wrong. Now who can we depend on who is here and mighty strong? I'm just thinking we should have some wine as well. Yeah. Yeah. I would go for the pig ball, it's a bit dry so it cuts through the fattiness of the cheese. Oh no, I've lost the bread. He's an amateur. Luck is good for me and also good for you. It's very labour saving when a dinner party comes. 
crumbs. You leave it on the table and it eats up all the crumbs. What is the smelliest cheese that you know? Limburger, Munster, Stinking Bishop. There is one made in Sardinia. They actually have maggots in, in the cheese. Why is it that some cheese comes out as Red Leicester some comes out as cheddar. Why does one come out as one and one comes out as another? They've all made with two ingredients, milk and salt. Soft cheeses are young, between three weeks and two months old. Harder cheeses like the cheddars, they are up to two years old. This one is 19 months. They are pressed as well, so more of the moisture comes out. Blue cheeses, these are four to five months old. They're semi-pressed. They add penicillium roccaforti into the milk. He's trying to make me eat blue cheeses. You're not getting a spoon, oh my God. Yeah, it's cool, of course. When I thought it was going to be you still got the skin on that? Absolutely. 90% of cheeses, the rind is perfectly edible. And 30 or 40% of cheeses, the rind is the best part. Yeah, I need, I need yeah. wine with this. It's luck. Three cheers for the green, white and blue. Gorgonzola. <laughs> cheers, Michael. Cheers, Simon. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, everyone. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the video. And uh, if you want to know more about me, you can go over to my website, which is julesguides.com, where you can find out more about me. And I've got a book coming out as well, which you'll be able to check the, the, the text description below and everything. Or you can follow Michael's Instagram, which I is am. Cheers and Over. I'll put links to that as well. Or come and see him down in Blackwoods Cheese <laughs> here in Borough Market. I am so tired. And I'm so, I've got a cheese. Exactly. I've got a cheese Gorgonzola. hangover. I'll see you next time. Gorgonzola, three cheers for the green, white and blue.